Season 1 Christmas Special. Hi everyone and welcome to our Christmas special for Season 1. This is Revolutionary War Rarities, the podcast from the Sons of the American Revolution. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Joe Maple. First of all, Merry Christmas everyone. We hope you have had and are having a wonderful Christmas season and that you will have many, many more in the future. Several days ago as I was thinking through all of the upcoming celebrations, I began to think we need to have a Christmas special. I will always remember growing up with all the various Christmas specials, Bob Hope, Andy Williams, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman, all of those. So, although this one will be much different, nevertheless, we decided to have this special episode to celebrate Christmas with our listeners. And, as always, none of our episodes are intended to give you a complete description of of our subject matter, but rather to present to you the little known facts which will hopefully drive you to research the topic more deeply. So welcome to our Christmas special. Jim, do you know much about how they celebrated Christmas during the Revolutionary Era? Well, Jim, I've read about it, have a pretty good understanding. First, Christmas was a highly debated day during the Revolutionary War era. Some religious groups were opposed to it as they felt it was rooted in pagan traditions. And the celebration of Christmas was even outlawed throughout much of New England. Indeed, you could be fined five shillings for every offense in the observance of Christmas or Christmas Day to include the making of mince pie, playing of cards, playing musical instruments, reading the book of prayer, or avoiding labor on Christmas Day. This information is all according to the Journal of the American Revolution. And by the late 18th century, which was towards the end of the American Revolution, more people breached these laws than observed them. So these practices of literally making the celebration of Christmas Day illegal began in the mid 1600s and were largely eliminated by the early 1800s. Now, here are the origins of Christmas in America. Christmas in America evolved from several festivals as follows. The Germanic Festival of the Yule. There are many interesting articles of this festival, but it was definitely rooted in pagan traditions and practices. This festival began to change with the Christianization of the German people. Pagans or paganism is also known as polytheism or a religion that is believed that believed in numerous deities. Second, Roman Saturnalia, an ancient Roman festival in honor of the god Saturn. Once again, another example of polytheism or paganism. And finally, the feast of the nativity or the celebration of the birth of Christ, which we now commonly refer to as Christmas. The Feast of the Nativity was where the Christian and pagan rituals became intermixed. Now, as you know, some of our American settles were Puritans. Puritans were originally members of the Church of England and sought to purify the Church of England from any Roman Catholic practices. So because of this, it was common for these Puritans to resist the celebration of Christmas as they felt it was too pagan or too popish. However, this was not a universally held belief, and there were many Americans who celebrated Christmas. Well, Jim, relative to today's Christmas celebrations, Christmas during the American Revolution was muted. So outside of the individuals mentioned previously, it was still a time of celebration, but not nearly as robust as it is today. Christmas was more of an adult celebration involving parties, feasts, hunts, balls, drinking, wassailing, and mumming or masking, which was dressing up in costumes and putting on plays. Caroling was popular in the southern colonies and included singing several songs that are still very well known today, such as the First Noel, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, and the Holly and the Ivy. Now, some say the Christmas trees were first introduced in North America by Hessian soldiers during the Revolutionary War. However, Christmas trees did not become common in the states until around the time of the War of 1812. Either way, Christmas trees in America were a tradition from the German settlers. Prior to that, homes were decorated with evergreens such as holly and mistletoe. Okay, it's time for trivia, Jim Maples. You ready? I'm ready. All right. 
Do you know what the term nog, as in eggnog, means? Well, Jim, I do. The word comes from grog, which is basically any drink that contained rum. Correct. And now the term nog is associated with a beverage that contains beaten eggs. Question number two. Do you know when Christmas became an official holiday in the United mm, States? Yes, that would not come until June the 28th, 1870, almost 100 years after the American Revolution. Correct. Again, it is important to note that the first Congress of the United States met on December the 25th, 1789, to conduct business. So Christmas, although celebrated at the time, was not a holiday and did not mean nearly as much as it does today. At one time, it was illegal, as we've discussed, to even celebrate Christmas or to perform any task that even resembled the celebration of Christmas. Okay, question number three. During the Revolutionary Era, the 12 days of Christmas were a significant time. Christmas time was not just a single day, but rather a season. It was two weeks, or specifically 12 days. Do you know the significance of those 12 days? Well, Jim, that's an easy one. The 12 days were identified as the time from Christ's birth, December the 25th, to the Epiphany, or the coming of the Magi, on January the 6th, the three wise men who came to the birth of Christ. Correct again, Jim Maples. Just as our country has changed and evolved over the years, so has Christmas. The history of Christmas from a pagan celebration to primarily a Christian celebration took many, many centuries. Acceptance of the holiday by Puritans took time. Evolution of the holiday to be much more child-friendly took time. Christmas is an outstanding example of why history is so important. For those of you that dislike the study of history, this is yet another great example of how we learn from history and how history establishes who we are today and what we do today. So many of the festivals of Christmas came from pagan-based festivals. and Many of our founding fathers did celebrate Christmas as a Christian-based time, but did so more as an adult holiday with little involvement from children. Many of the traditions of Christmas during the Revolutionary Era are alive and well today, and many have evolved into much more broadly celebrated activities. But with all that being said, Christmas was nowhere near the celebration that it is today. Now, we would like to introduce to you, our listeners, the President General of the Sons of the American Revolution, who would like to bring Christmas greetings on behalf of the membership of SAR, as well as Revolutionary War Rarities. I would like to introduce you all to President General C. Bruce Pickett. Thank you, gentlemen. First, I want to thank you for listening to the Revolutionary War Rarities. This is an important educational program of the SAR and is leading the way as we expand our programs into newer communication platforms. But most of all, I'm here to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This is the time of year when we all have the opportunity to reflect on the past year, enjoy time with our families, enjoy our various traditions, eat too much, and take time to focus on the true meaning of this holiday. This holiday is historic, just as it was important to our Founding Fathers, it is to us today. And so I will conclude by simply saying from the 38,000 members of the Sons of the American Revolution, may all have a happy holiday season, a Merry Christmas, and a happy, healthy, and safe New Year. Thank you so much, Mr. President General, for those kind words. And with that, we sign off for the year 2022. We thank you for watching and being a part in listening to Revolutionary War Rarities. And we hope that you will join us again in two weeks as we kick off 2023. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Joe Maples. And we thank you for joining us today. And please be sure to join us for the next episode of Revolutionary War Rarities. This has been a production of the National Society, Sons of the American Revolution, www.sar.org. Merry Christmas, everyone.